Welcome, welcome, welcome. In this session, we're going to be talking about what Jesus said about prayer. Okay, what did he say about prayer? We're not going to we're not going to be talking about the Lord's prayer. We did this in the previous session. We're going to be talking about more details about how Jesus said we should pray. Um, and we're going to be reading from Luke chapter eleven, verses five through twelve. So let's get this out right now, and we're going to read it. It's Luke chapter eleven, verse five. We'll start. He said to them, this is Jesus, the words in red, Which of you, if you go to a friend at midnight and tell him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has come to me from, uh, from a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he, from within, will answer and say, Don't bother me, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and, 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 and give it to you. I tell you, although he will not arise and give it to him because he's, he's his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as, as many as he needs. Okay? So Jesus is talking about here about your persistence, about your boldness of faith. You know, it says in Hebrews, we come before the throne of grace with boldness. Okay? So when we pray... Um, God is looking for boldness, okay? He, he wants us to be bold, not disrespectful, but bold and persistent in our prayers. Let's go on and read verse 9. I tell you, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep seeking and you will find. Now, I know this is uh, the teaching of ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And it says here, keep knocking and it will be open to you. So the words in the Greek saying, ask and you will receive, uh, seek and you'll find, knock, ask, seek, knock, are words that are in the perfect tense in the Greek. So I mean, in, in English, we got you know past, present, and future. But in the Greek, there's the perfect tense, which means it's just, it covers all tenses. It, it, it's it's something that continually happens and it will hap- will continually happen, is happening and will continually happen. So ask and keep asking, seek and keep seeking, knock and keep knocking and it will be, you know, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, to him who knocks it will be opened. So that's the thing. So a lot of things, a lot of times, you know, I said this before in the, in the previous session, people say, why do we have to ask if, if God already knows? Because God wants us to worship him. He wants us to respect him. He wants us to acknowledge him. It's about acknowledging him and worshiping him as God, as being the one who's on the throne, as the one who is the provider and the protector you know, so he wants us to acknowledge that. And sometimes it's not just, it's not about really asking, but it's, it's about acknowledging him as our provider and our protector. That's why he wants us to ask. When we ask, it, that's our way of, of, of acknowledging uh, that he is the source of what we need. And that's what he likes. Verse 12. For if he asks for an egg, he won't give him a scorpion, will he? Now I said in the beginning of this verse, uh, in the beginning of this uh, uh, teaching, I said we'll go to verse twelve. But I'm sorry, I we're going to be going to verse thirteen here. If you that if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit? To those who ask him. Now, this is this is key. This is key. So let's go back to verse 12 here again. If he, being the child, asks the father, uh, uh, excuse me, let's go back to verse 11. Sorry about that. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Of course not. If he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake instead of a fish? You know, no, of course not. Or if he asks for an egg, will you give, you know, he won't give him a scorpion, will he? No, of course not. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, there's a a lot of parents, even though they're still evil, they still give good gifts to their children, 
How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So this is a key key right here is Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people that say, well, you know, if you go to a certain meeting, you know, it's it, you know, people say this is not the Holy Spirit moving. Don't go there. You won't get you'll get you'll get a different spirit. You're not you won't get the Holy Spirit. You'll get a different spirit. People that are very paranoid, spiritually paranoid. They get, oh, you know, if you go to this meeting, it's very strange things happening there. Well, you know, if you go there, don't go there because you might come back with a different spirit. Not the Holy Spirit, but a different spirit. Listen, trust God. Go ask the Father for the Holy Spirit and trust that God will protect you and won't you won't get anything but the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's, it's, it's God's promise to you. It's Jesus' words here, in the words in red. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Don't be afraid. Don't think that you're going to get a different spirit. Ask the Father for the Holy Spirit and trust, and He'll give it to you. But before you do, make sure you repent. Remember, this is all in context. And a lot, a lot of people like to take one verse here, one chapter here, one, one passage here, one passage there. This is in context. Remember, the first message that Jesus ever preached, the first message that he preached, you know, after he got baptized by John and went in the wilderness, came back in the power of the Spirit, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom, the rule and reign of heaven is, is easy to get, is easy to attain. You can, God can rule over you. God can... You can you can you can live by God's rules, okay? Repent of your sin. You know Jesus continually teached repentance. It's the first thing he said. It's the last thing he said to his church, not to the world, but to this church in the Book of Revelation. So after you've repented as much as you can, okay? I know a lot of you know some of you you need a lot of help from God, and that's fine. That's great. Then ask him. But after you've repented, then ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Don't expect him to send the Spirit into a house that's dirty. Hey, if you want royal, if royalty is coming to your house, you're going to clean it up a little bit. Okay? You're going to clean it up a little bit. So we got the most, the royal, the most royal of royals coming, and that is the Holy Spirit. So make sure you're cleaned up as much as you can. I know some of you say, oh, don't even try to clean up. Let Jesus do that. That's not what Jesus said. No, he wants you to do whatever you can. He doesn't want you to be a bunch of helpless, you know, people who can't really do anything for yourself. No, you do what what you can for yourself. Jesus gave you the power. You know, it says that he won't let you go through any, he he won't let you be tempted beyond that which you can bear, which means you can resist. So resist sin and receive the Spirit of God in your life. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, thanks again.